there's lot, lots, uh, lots of stuff's been happening. So it's been quite a quite an interesting week in Indian football. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so before we start, uh, at some point, Orko will join us. Um, I don't know exactly when, but he should be joining us soon. So I just wanted to ask um, a club uh, that you were part of once. Uh, once again, Bangalore FC have sacked their coach. Uh, actually, the coach has left by mutual agreement. Yeah. So I just want to ask you this: right? What do you make of the whole situation? Uh, while I'll tell you, while while we were there, so I was there at that match. Yeah. I mean, I, I did not expect Bangalore to win by uh, any stretch of imagination. I thought three four zero could have been a possibility, and so it proved. A uh, couple of uh, penalties and stuff, but still, Mumbai were uh, not playing. You know, Changte on the bench and few things like that. But Bangalore really didn't look like they had a lot to offer. So when you look at the whole situation that is going on there, what is your takeaway? So I think for people in the know, I think it wasn't a surprise even before the tweets came out mid-game. Um, I think the writing was on the wall. And I think almost exactly a year ago is the exact same situation where you know the coach's head was on the chopping block and you knew people inside the game knew that, okay, this is his last game. Um, and he just went on a winning run and then it was like, okay, one more game, one more game. And then it just eventually turned out that he just didn't lose until the finals on penalties so i think it bought himself some time but once i guess that's in in the the mindset of the management and the the owner it's only a matter of time before you know when results start to go that way that they're going to hit that hit that button and with a lot of clubs you always feel the sooner the better um for two reasons before you you know people would delay it and you think okay the season's gone build for next season let the new guy come in and have a look but i think with six teams qualifying for the playoffs no one's ever out of it, uh, you know. If, uh, if either but stop the checks bouncing, they even may make it to the playoffs as well. So, yeah. so uh, this is something that I wanted to ask, and something that we have, uh, you know, spoken about. Uh, when you were there in the club, and uh, we have recently spoken about this a lot yes. for something which we will talk about later. Reminiscing, but uh, yeah, <laughs> when you were at the club, you had such a strong Indian contingent. Uh, so many of them went on to make India debuts. Seven, eight, or maybe even more of them went on to make India debuts. Um, your foreigners were always fit. You only had four foreigners and all four of them were always on the field. Yep. Which is absolutely uh, great for an I-League team at that time. What do you think happened? And you recruited so well. Uh, so what do you think is going on now? Because when you look at that team, they don't seem to have recruited as well as before. Yeah, I think... See, yeah, we definitely recruited well in those days. And see, there's two ways. I mean, you, when you talk about recruiting well, you can be astute with your recruiting and go out and get players before people have discovered these players. And then obviously you get value in the market. You don't, we didn't pay, you know, transfer fees. We didn't pay big bucks for the guy likes of, you know, Udantas, Nishus, Daniel, um, Eugene's, uh, well, Len, Len um, you know, and the list is endless. But or what happened later when they broke when they came into the ISL is where they, you know they just broke the bank, right? So you know with the Mikus, etc. And I think at some point as a club, I think four or five years ago, I think the owner tweeted about it about you know the costs and how much uh, they're running into. There's a conscious decision made to you know lower the spend, and then. It's how, you know, it's tough. I mean, most clubs, when, when they stop spending, they'll cut the women's team out or they'll cut the youth team out or, you know, they make those cuts initially and then maybe lesser quality foreigners. And I think that's that's where I think maybe things have gone a little bit different from the way it was done back in the day where they spent a lot, obviously, on their youth. But the reality is you, the youth are not, it's not a simple case of, all right, you know, we'll get a good, under 18 team together, under 20, you know, RFD, whatever, Reliance Young Champs, under 21 league, have a good team in that league and, you know, win the BDFA without losing a game. But that still doesn't prepare those players for ISL. There's too big of a jump from local league champions, under 21 champions to, you know, the top division. Because realistically, your state league champions are not necessarily high league quality. You still have to get through the second division. Second division is pretty competitive. So 
you've got one more level of second division before you get to I-League and then before you get to ISL. So these players, much as it looks great, you're like, oh, you know, we've got a player coming through our system. How many from BFC's academy have really made it? I mean, Leon Augustine was one of the bright hopes a few years ago. Um, you know, you, a lot of clubs, they'll, they'll claim Shivasakti was theirs, but reality is he's come out of Raman Vijayan's academy, right? So not many people are really breaking through because I think the pathways aren't properly developed. And I think that's what we we had, you know, we did a little bit better in those days. We picked players who were probably ready for the league at that point. Right. <clears throat> yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I, so I, no, friend, so I also wanted to ask Prad about one more thing. Do you want to? Uh, before? The, yeah, I mean, because we have a lot of teams to go through. So okay. do, you want, do you want to keep this? This is the biggest news at the moment, right? So that's <laughs> why we are actually wasting time and time here. Uh, because I also had a other question for you in terms of recruitment itself. Because I, the idea that, as far as I understand, for Bangalore at the moment is to not spend too much money on uh, Indian players and hoping that the youngsters can make the jump. You having played at a time when you gave a lot of youngsters, you know, a chance. Yeah. And then you also ensured that. They, when they came in, they had that Nishu told me stories about, you know, how you wouldn't play him in the beginning and waited for the right moment to give him those chances, such things. And ensured that when you, when they moved to the I-League I I level, they were fine. Yeah. How do you bridge that gap? Has it gone too far now? or? Uh... No, I think, I think that's where you've got to find, you know, find the balance in, in training. I think what the advantage was in those days, we trained a lot. The training to game ratio was better. You know, typically you had a train all week, you have a game on the weekend, train all week, you have a game on the weekend. So I think you're building up towards games. And I think the format of the ISL with games every day, you don't get that ideal ratio of training to games that players need, especially young players. And, you know, you arrange uh, midweek games or a friendly game. You can arrange that because you know your games on Saturday, the team that's not playing. For example, when we traveled, if we were traveling to Kolkata or Northeast, or like Shillong, for example, for a game. You're going to travel with a squad of 2021. 20, there's four, five, or maybe even those are eight players that were left behind. And when you come back, they would have been training with, like, the first time Richard in the first season, uh, Richard Hood was training with them. When you come back, you're trying to organize a game so that those players get that game time as well. And I think, you know, that those were the games where we played against the TFA founder, where we played against India under. 19s and found the Daniels and all that. So you, you've got to have a lot of those games in the season as well, behind the scenes, that help in the development of players. Um, and I think that's, again, it's tough with the ISL schedule the way it is. It's, it's, it's tough to get those games and costs, etc. So Hopefully we'll see a Jerry soon here. Uh, let's see. But uh, Orko has some questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll move on to the team at the top of the table. Okay. Your right. favorite. Yeah, my favorite. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like expected, he's kind of transformed the team in his image, right? I yep. mean, uh, and, and a lot of people do lazy journalism or lazy reporting, say sticky tag. But for me, where Manolo does the business, he get, gets you a lot of these one nils. He gets you a lot of these clean sheets. He's really good at this stuff. They have five clean sheets out of seven, and it's. It's kind of expected, right? Going on expected lines, the Monolo project, yeah? It's, see, for me, it's common sense. I think, look, I mean, football isn't just scoring goals. Yeah. That's just one aspect of it. People forget that defending is a very, very important part of it. And I'll, that's what I love about Manolo. It's like you had a lot of influence of Spanish coaches coming, coming into India, and, and some of them are very good. Some of them are just obsessed with possession. And, you know, we'll talk about possession and talk about building and, oh, it's a project like, you know, like, like for example, like Gamba was at Odisha. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you kept the ball, but if you keep conceding um, goals at the back, you've got to get points on the table. And I think where Manolo is very pragmatic. I remember some interview where he was talking about a goalkeeper and he said, look, yeah, yeah, that's all well and good. You'd love them to play out from the back. But the first and foremost job of the goalkeeper is to keep the ball out of the net. So I think when you know i've obviously been being in goa and their neighbors over here so i see them a bit we've played a couple of friendly matches against them and um three three games so far this season we've played against some of different teams of ours and their reserves and 
you could see the progression from preseason when we played them to now and how just some of the things which are basics like hammering home like how the team shape is from throw-ins when they're defending throw-ins how transitions when they lose the ball how they react what shape they are and i think because of the obsession with style over you know substance over the years at the club players have gotten into bad habits their fullbacks and other players and they're very very open when they when they attack and that's why it looks great they, they always looked exciting to watch but it was they were easy to beat um you know end of the day yeah when it comes down to where you can figure out ways to beat them and they were always in those big games when it comes to playoffs couldn't make it because in one-off games you could you could get it over them and that's where i think he's going to bring in that big change is mentality as well as obviously just doing the basics right when you don't have the ball so i think they're going to be one of the toughest teams to beat this year and uh <clears throat> just going to take a, one more question and uh, this regarding specific players because um two players first <laughs> is on udanta because obviously lord stimach pointed it out he very he was very point blank when he said he needs to do more yep yeah and uh and we, I, we understand because we've seen we've seen udanta's journey throughout the year and you're somebody who's very familiar with the, the yeah event. so i mean does does this udanta deserve a starting spot at the asian cup or is too much right about it i'm a hundred percent with igor on this because look i think when udanta burst into the scene terrific forward in the under 18s used to put, you know top scorer under bang the goals and once he transitioned into senior football you have to take a role out wide because you're not going to play down the middle at that level and so over the years i think he struggled because people criticize him that you know his de- delivery was good enough his crosses but that's not something he'd done a lot of he's not a winger and then you know he improved upon that and you got a lot of assists and it was can he do more can he there's not enough end product from him you know where are the goals and i think what a lot of national team coaches picked from him is his work rate like whether it's constant time whether it's team match the defensive side of the game he was very he, he added that to his game so you could put udanta in a national team game you can play at the guys like ashik because you know when you don't have the ball which you do for a long periods of the game you won't have the ball these guys you can rely on for their defensive work rate for um tracking back being an option on a counter attack etc but now that he's been there for 10 years at the top level you've got to have something more to your game and i think that's where you can't just rely on okay i was on pace and i'll i work hard enough yeah fine that's that's why you're in the squad but you want a starting place like what you just asked orca then there needs to be something more you need better quality on the ball you need to make better decisions when you have the ball um and i think the move should help him. i think getting out of bfc was probably one season too late he should have maybe have done it a little bit earlier um and i think being under a coach like uh, Manuel Marquez, I think he will probably add those things to his game because starting place isn't taken for granted now. You know, he has to earn his spot. If you're not starting for the club, then I can, the question you asked about starting for national teams, that's the question. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to, because I have a follow-up question, I'm going to skip the Jay Gupta question because it's a question on everyone's mind, right? Like, like, and he's obviously exciting people, but probably, you know, we need to probably see him for one more season before we can come to any conclusive you know but uh about udanta right so i just have a follow up question i thought igor put him in the qatar match and him and bos because they were better they would offer more defensively right uh, and i understand his frustration because all of because bos kind of locked down his flank but the the other side was was the problematic one right yeah. and keep in mind akram afi was also playing on the left so obviously so is igor's problem and i think you touched upon it igor's problem that he did not help lock down that flank or it just that you know when india had the chance to counter he was he could not deliver. yeah i think you got to be this is where i think the difference between fans maybe sometimes and and the way we coaches read it his comments after the game as a coach of the national team is probably based on not just those 90 minutes it's probably based on what he's observed in training leading up to the game um in the previous games and what he's offered in the camp and asked to do a certain role maybe specifically in that match and didn't do those roles so obviously we're not privy to all all those little bits of information and 
having seen every single training session. So uh, that's why I think Ego knows exactly what he's doing and what he's saying. And he may also be doing it with a little psychological tweak to get a raised performance out of the play in the next few months before that as well. So, and if that does work and Udanta kicks on and does that, you know, it's an asset for the national team. So I think it's not just specifics about that game. It's overall, I mean, and it is, it's cumulative. It's he's seen him a lot at close quarters and they see what the player does when they go back to their club. And then when they come back and, you know, and that's why it was good that he's, you know, you see Apuya returning, you see, so he gives players a chance and you've got to deliver to the coach when he sets the standards that high. I think some of the players have let their standards go. Speaking of a club that is really climbing up, uh, Kerala Blasters, like uh, before we were talking and then you would look at the table and think people who spend the money most are in and around the top. Kerala is a little bit, you know, um, not really part of that. So what do you attribute their uh, success and consistent success uh, uh, I think over the last three that's, years that's you hit the nail on the head with that word consistent it's consistency I think you keep the same coach um you keep a lot of the you know the core together uh, and I think you're going to get results I think you've got arguably one of the best players in in the league ever I think Adrian Luna's um top top player in, in every aspect I mean not you look at like I said it's football's not just about the goals. You'll remember him for okay, he scored from near the halfway line, on you know, like or whatever. There was that brilliant volley and and, and the strikes because the, the highlight reels keep showing that. But you look at how he presses, when to press, and you know, it's almost like he's the one that leads it for the club. And you talk about in the past when you had a number ten would come and play in the ISL foreign players or even in the I League for that matter. Great on the ball, off the ball, you know, walk around, don't do anything. Was he's you know the exact opposite i mean he's the benchmark for the other players this is what you need to be doing and i think i'm sure he has even bigger influence in the dressing room and in the, in training as well so you have players that, are that half the job's done both as a coach and as a club and i think that he's molded his team quite well around um the players that he has and which is why they could afford to have lost some of the players that they've lost and probably look better for it um now so i think it's more of a this this is more about a team and with that club it was normally always about individuals it was always you know this individual the next year was this person um you know and the hero worshiping has gone now towards almost like now it's focused around how the team performs so i think that's that's a good sign to see but and i so i know I just, sorry uh what? I mean, if we, if we just take the next struggling team, uh, just wants, because the AFC Cup is going on, right? Yeah. Uh, and obviously, this is a team that I want to speak about. Won the title, obviously, last year. But uh, it's... Uh, and we, we know that Daddy Going Cup loves the continental competition. I, we know that he spent a considerable amount of money trying to win this. I don't think it's a secret. It's it's just not worked out. You know? I mean, it's depends how you classify worked out, right? They won the league. Yeah. Um, is the target to win the league again, or is it to? I think it will do something in the in the continental competition, and that that hasn't happened. Yeah, I guess. I mean, if you look at the way the team was built in terms of the big big spend that made on Indian players. Yeah, I guess you need, you'd expect that they're planning to do well in Asia. But I think, you know, it's it's a tough group. Um, you know, Bashundra, no mean, no pushovers. Um, I think Odisha's massively improved. So it was always going to be a tough ask to get out of that group. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a little bit of a disappointment, I would say, um, for their performance in Asia. I mean, today I looked at the squad, and that was a significantly weakened squad so it looks like the focus is on on the league now um but yeah i think look doing well in asia is not as easy and playing in yeah. asia while the league's going on is even is just as, tricky as well yeah so um, there's not much rest for these players with the way their season's gone i think that's that's probably where it's caught up with them and i think yeah. you know you talk about that the kolkata league as well they let go of some matches over there yeah. You need to have the right balance as an overall as a club to play in that many fronts. Um, I think that's probably just a 
watch and learn kind of thing for them this season and say, all right, this is where we need to change um, the whole structure of the club so that we can compete on all these fronts. Do you think uh, Fernando has this challenge in his hands? So I, I could see Sahal going there has become, I think he's improved as a player. But uh, at the same time, I do feel certain foreigners don't really stick with the Ferrando style of football and he's sort of putting it together. Even last year, though they won, they were quite strong defensively. They were not that great going forward, won on penalties in the end, very dicey final, you know, a lot of set pieces, penalties, blah, blah, blah. So, what do you make of uh, Ferrando's time in, uh, in Bagan now? So I think in a, in a way it's almost like gone back to like all of us know the, the old days of uh, Bagan in the in the I League where it was you know the management make the signings and the coaches have to deal with it, right? And I think in a way it's the same where you question whether those are Ferrando signings or whether the management's brought in big name foreign players and like right we need a striker let's get X Y um, we need this let's get this player. And I don't know if that's the right balance for for that team um, as a coach. Whether he, you know, pick those kind of players for the style he likes to play, and then he's had to just deal with it. Um, but I think he's done a great job, like developing some of the Indian players. They've done really well, uh, uh, you know, and continued their progress. But it's, it, you know, I just think the structure. Because right? I think like Mumbai, if you look at it, they've balance playing in Asia as well as um, being competitive in the league and done done a really good job of that and at playing at a much much higher level in 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 AFC like Champions League is different complete different ball game than AFC Cup so I think they've 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 handled it a lot better in terms of the kind of players that they have the balance in their squad as well as um, you know the Indian players as well so I have this theory. Like a lot of people are uh, calling for Thapa's spot in the national team not to be there, not to be a starter. Uh, that he's not played well in a lot of years. Now he's obviously in Bagan. They were one of the big signings. When you look at him, what do you what do you see of the player like him? Because when I see him in real life, he does a lot of running around off the ball. Uh, so I just wanted to know your a coach's uh, eye on a player like Thapa. I think he's a, he's a yeah, no, no one's ever questioned work rate with him. Um, hard working player. He's technically very good. I think it's where where you fit him. I mean, kind of a box to box player, but um, I think when you're expecting the creativity from him, do you get enough? Do you get Brandon quality of creativity, or do you get Sahal quality of creativity? Probably not. Then if you question, and if you say, okay, you can play him because he can help with build up um you know in that pivot kind of position you know does he provide you what Apuya provides you or or some of the other players that have played in there or if you purely as a blocker and in there just you know be that kind of workhorse in defend in this in the middle of the park who can do that are there others who can do it better like a clan you know at, at club level or or others even at the national team level um Jixons and so on there's, there's there's a lot of players who can do that part of it a little bit better so he's got attributes of all, you know, those three midfield positions, but in neither one would we say he's the best at. So I think that's where, you know, you can put him in as the joker almost and say, all right, you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So it'll work. So it's almost like SAF opponents works perfectly because you don't need too much of the defensive side of it. You can break them down and you need the work rate. Whereas when you play the elite teams, I think that's where maybe it doesn't quite fit the mold so it's just horses for courses i mean there are players like that all over the world where you, you got to pick them for the right moments but great kid never never a problem with attitude work rate and all that and i think it's just a matter of coaches have to pick him for the right games all right and um, obviously from one team that struggled in asia to another team which struggled in asia and uh, i on match day one i said i fear it might be an complete wipe out and that's exactly what happened right mm -hmm. and i understand there's left in the middle we, we get all of that right uh but they played i think four games while des was there yep. and uh uh i i don't know it's it's i get it it was a it wasn't the same group as last year yeah right um but even in the league right even in the league they haven't looked 
the same they haven't they haven't they haven't been uh, as smooth as they were last year no, i think they, they looked invincible last year um, yeah. almost went through the whole season yeah. without losing and when when you have seasons like that everybody else in the league takes notice know, yeah not only that they strengthen their teams as well and they realize look if we got to compete against mumbai we need to be better here there and everywhere mm. i think you underestimate the the injuries like somebody like missing Noguera. Noguera. Uh, it's taken away a little bit of the balance that they have in their team um the easy argument people are saying oh they're missing fall missing jahu oh. um but i think they still play really good football they control the game and but i love that for the fact that if you look at the indian players that, that were there improved players that a lot of clubs yeah passed on and that, that for me is always a, a great sign of coaching and how good a coach is like not many clubs would have taken a pop at dipin not many would look at the like you know chante chante criticism at national level as well having made his debut they were like doesn't do enough of this etc etc and those two the obvious ones that have significantly improved um, at that club i think lachenpa's turned into a really good goalkeeper metab singh who's you know came came through the east bengal youth system that was discarded and wasn't really like not many clubs are looking at him he's he's done really well over there uh, and i think so you've got to give credit for the number of players that they're still developing indian players and i think apuya's game's gone to another level at that club too so i think if they have all their foreigners fit and firing they'll still be they're definitely contenders this year and even under pleased on the you know anthony they got their first goal in the champions league this season mm. uh, but what people need to realize that level of competition is is light years ahead of yeah. isl yeah. When, when when we were competing in the i league and winning the i league you'd get champions league qualifiers and then when you failed you'd get into the fc cup we knew that if you got past the first or second stage of the champions league qualifiers you're in for six nils every every game <laughs> so it's it's tennis score lines so um you it's almost like you'd be happy to like just get a little bit far and then drop into the afc cup where you can at least compete and make it to sort of some yeah. final quarterfinals quarterfinal you expect from then on it's a luck of the draw hmm. but champion league is is different level yeah and uh and, and and this is where you know when we talk about we talk about india's true strength as a as a member association right you have you don't just don't have teams from tier 1 and tier 1 the top 8 you know yeah. including iraq and uzbekistan and all of those you have teams from even tajikistan and all of these these member associations doing decently well right and then people have this argument saying oh you know the the east is much easier which it's really not because we've seen between thai team beating burinam beating melbourne city yeah right and to do that you still need to have you know four localites in your back five right they kept a clean sheet against melbourne city right so is the acl the true and not the ranking we know and we've discussed this so many times the rankings just there it's hogwash right yeah. is the asian champions league the true barometer of how far we have to go as a member association it's not the true barometer i would say but if you dig deep and you scratch the surface a little bit look when we play some of these iranian teams or Uzbek teams, like you mentioned, some of them are playing without foreigners, right? And we're struggling against them with five foreigners. Yeah. Um, and it's not like it's not like in the old days where it was just random, you know, African players and and, and one random Asian, right? These are established foreign really players. Paid foreigners, yeah. No, and and not not just not paid. It's the they've got a good CV. You know, these are guys who paid it. Um, Champions League played in um, top flights, and the other thing is when you scratch the surface a little bit more, you look at it like so. You look at an Iranian league, you look at um, a J League, you look at a K League, you look at the coaches over there. Significant number of those coaches are local coaches, so you've got to raise that level up. Then, obviously, even in the player profile, and yeah, look, Vietnamese teams uh, can compete. Um, you know. It's not just about you know crowds like Indonesian teams would struggle against uh, against these teams. You've got to get the whole ecosystem. As well. You're week in week out if you're playing strong teams, then yeah, you've got a chance of competing midweek when you've got an hour Champions League game. But when it's such a big gulf in in the difference, 
and the pace of the game, you know, you're not you're, you're not going to be able to compete. So I think it was too soon. A nice taste, get a reality check playing Champions League. But now this is going to be the last season for a while. But and I think the clubs are not there yet. And Indian football is not there yet. And I think um, Scott Cooper said it really well in an interview um, with um, Off the Pitch that day, um, in a podcast. He said, look, when you're a coach in a Champions League or an AFC competing, AFC competition competing club in Asia, you might look for a Japanese player for your Asian quota for certain attributes. You might look for a Korean player for certain attributes or Australian player. You know, we're not there at the stage yet where even Thai clubs or you know, a Vietnamese club is looking and saying, oh, I'll get an Indian player as my Asian for this position. Mm. Right. So they're a long way off then competing with those kind of teams where they're competing with all locals. So now we just move to another team playing in Asia, Odisha. They're doing well, not unexpected. Uh, they spend a lot of money, got a good uh, bunch of players. Um, what do you make of their season? Like this is the first time they're having to balance the whole thing as well, right? Traveling yeah. in Asia and playing in uh, the league as well. How do you think they have done the whole thing? I think they're doing terrifically well. I mean, they're in the top um, top five, top six, uh, which is you know, par for the course for them in terms of the league, I think over the last few years, um, you know, they made it into the playoffs last year because it was a top six. Had it been, I think, top six the previous couple of years, they might have made it in as well. So that's, you know, they're on par at the moment in the league. Um, but some good wins in the AFC Cup. And I think there are certain teams almost, you know, it's a, used to say it even in, in the UK, there are cup teams and then there are league teams. And they're almost perfectly suited for these kind of cup competitions because you know, they, they're always going to score goals um, and they're going to be exciting to watch. And then it's, you know, you get the game like they had against Bashundra last time and it didn't go in their favour. And today it looks like, you know, they're 1-0 up playing against 10 men. It might go in their favour. So, you know, they're a perfect team for the Cup. And I think they will they could go further in quite far in this AFC Cup. And I just hope it doesn't, success in the AFC doesn't hamper the way where they're doing well in the league. Because I think, you know, they're an exciting team to watch. You think they can go much further in the AFC Cup because they have the squad at least to get to the semi-final that level, quarter-final semi-final. Level. Yeah, I think that they'll they'll get out of this group, which means I think it's automatically interzonal. Um, and I said because you score a lot of goals, you it's a double-edged sword because they also concede a lot. The away goals um, kicks in and all that. So you know, astute coaches can come here and then play out a five-four and then say, all right, you know, we can afford to lose one nil at home right so kind of like oh win one nil at home kind of so sneak through that way so i think it depends who you draw once you once you get to that next round um the next round of games i think they're not the strongest at the back they will always contend against teams who've got pretty solid to break down um, they might come up against some good teams but i think you, you've got roy krishna you've got diego Maurizio, you those guys are capable of scoring in the top, even top opposition in the AFC Cup. So. And uh, before I move on, I'm just going to say this. Jahu is leading a lot of the metrics again. So, I mean, and every season, I think, you know, this guy's done. This guy may not do as well. So, he comes back. But uh, I'm going to go to another team which you might be following closely because I think uh, you know a lot of the officials <laughs> on, on, on the team. Uh, we are obviously talking about North Northeast East. United, right? And um, and Brad, they've spent a cons- they've they've up usually they're the lowest budget team in the league. Obviously, Punjab's come in and taken that, that yeah. approach. Uh, and Northeast, this time they've not. This time they have kind of spent or a lot of areas. Uh, but as we saw, was the East Bengal right? It and I don't want to go based on this one match, but. Um, it looks like a middling season at best. Yeah. So my question to you is that, uh, and, and as somebody who's also a CEO, right? Uh, would you do this? Would you go for broke? And if you went for broke, would you rather push for the top four, or would you be like, you know, let me just improve from eleventh to ninth? It's it's gradual. Yeah, I understand improvement is gradual, but. When you're spending this kind of money, does that bring extra pressure? 
So I think the plus when it made when it's when it's top six, that's changed the equation a lot because now you can make that jump from being see between eleven and nine. There's no difference. It's one game normally, right? It's normally just there's not there's normally one team that just has a disastrous season. It's way down there, and then the, the rest of the teams in the ISL are typically one or two wins away from one another. It's basically, like they play each other. It's that six pointer game. Um, so I think once you spend that kind, of, like you said, you're rightly said, they've not. The reason where they are the way where they are now in the league this year, they have spent more. Um, but spending, clubs have always. In the past, we've seen clubs spend as well and then not do so well. So you got to spend it right. I think they've spent well. Um, I think they've got a really good coach. I think he's doing um, wonders with the squad that he's got. But I like again another thing that I really like. I said it with other clubs; it's the same thing. You got coaches who look beyond their first team, look at some of the reserves, and say, "Hang on a second, this guy's just as good as what we have in the first team," and try him out in training and throw him in in a couple of games. And because there's the stigma in ISL over the years, or whatever, oh, this guy's an ISL player, or he's only an I League player, and oh, he's he's a youth player. People like us who've been around a while know that there's not that much of a difference between even a second division player and some of the ISL players. It's either right timing, right agent, you know, right connections, um, and, and and that's sometimes where it kicks in. So I think he's done a good job in getting some players punching above their weight. Um, and I think again, consistency. They've kept Philip or two. It's very unlike Northeast. Very rarely used to retain players, and they've had a few good foreigners over the season. And it's almost like because they were a selling club, try and get rid of them and you know make a bit of money. But they've held on to their best foreign player they've had since in the last season. I think Philippa too was their best signing last season. Um, they couldn't retain their striker. That would have been a even bigger asset for them. And obviously keeping Gogo is another asset as well, which at some point I'm sure they'll cash in on. So when when you're looking at the sorry sorry if just look at the squad right and and you hit the nail on the head because. These a lot of these players went really ISL regulars last season, right? Yeah. Uh, if I look at if I look at squad, I look at uh, Jitin MS, or I look at uh, you know uh, uh, Pragyan Gogoi or yeah. uh, Gani Nigam, for that matter. If there's one team which is actually dived into the ISL pool of reserves and subs, it is this team, right? They've they've gone for the ones that. Probably went getting a lot of game time. Uh, Gaurav Bora, Manveer Singh, uh, Tondonba, right? So, like you said, they've kind of utilized the these so, players. Yeah, I mean, basically, so Mandar's taken a leaf out of the BFC 2013 playbook of yeah. which we, you know, wrote, which was take players that others don't see value in um, and utilize them in in a way that in the right way. And I think that's exactly what, like, like Gunny Nigam's been promising player since I think well, he was in our youth system. Yeah, yeah, he was top scorer in the when we won the IFA Shield with that young squad. And just you know injuries and as a striker just wasn't making it. They've utilised him more in the central positions now and even wide. And I think he matured as well, obviously now, and he's been there for a while and starting to get better results um, with players of like that. And I think. They've got a few Kerala players over there, so they've got a bit of a bond over there that you know, and this stability. And you know, these kids are hard working. So the way the coach is playing with Benali's playing, I think that will get them points um in this league to be mid-table. But you know, the quality sometimes gets exposed, like you said, against the East Bengal game, the lack of quality, you could say. Um, but I think they'll be they'll definitely be mid table because there's enough teams that are not as structured as them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I agree with you. I, I think Dipesh, uh, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, Benali is doing as well as he can. Yeah. With, we have given the squad because uh, I honestly don't see how, given the Indians especially, yeah. right? Their Indian, uh, Hira and, and Ridim and Gaurav are. Some of their most experienced players, so I think speaks a lot of like a lot of volumes. And uh, yeah, I'll let Sandeep have the next team. 
No, I just because you brought this up, I just wanted to ask one question uh, related to what you just said. Uh, as the 2013 BFC team, when you started, you found players like say Reno, who had a reputation of being injured yeah. and was leaving, or a uh, few others of that that sort. And uh, you were one of the key reasons all of these players were signed. So you obviously found value in those players, but you had uh, a professional setup which at that time. From you know um, bibs and uh, heart rate monitors, diet, all of those things gave you a leg up. So 10, 15, uh, 10 years later, how much difficult is it to replicate a situation like this? Because now everybody is professional, and you are just looking at uh, the player. Yeah, I think in terms of technology, yeah, I think everyone's um, most of the clubs now have. Um, sports science if not full-time sports science involved with their clubs some level of it or coaching expertise i think you've got um you don't have the leg up let's say goalkeeping coach which back in the day was you know the only club to have a proper full-time goalkeeping coach not many did or qualified ones so i think now way when you're looking for those the one percent it's the quality of those of those things like it's the quality of your scouting it's the quality of uh the sports science that you can bring in i think that region's a hotbed uh, you if you, if you tap into it properly i think players feel that sense of playing for the club and i think they utilize the durand cup wisely um, they they've you know done things the proper way they've had a proper pre-season something which believe it or not northeast for many years you know then their pre-season was a disaster the way they housed players was was problems you know you've heard so many stories about foreign players mm. not being, being treated a certain way and walking out in the middle of the season um indian players not happy about the housing arrangements and you can see there's one club at the moment where they're going through the, that stuff and for no it's not surprised at the bottom of the table so if you don't do the basics right that's where you're going to get a massive drop um and i think it's a simple things like that i think that's what they're just doing they're doing the basics we're doing doing the things which you should do um, and you know that's why i think they're, they, they're competitive this year at least uh, no there are quite a few teams below but uh, i think we'll just pick one because we yeah. have to get to i league and we don't want to drag it too much uh, east bengal i think is par for the course chennai is again sort of okay with where they are uh, jamshedpur and uh, obviously hyderabad we are hearing a lot of bad stuff and with the money and things like that which we always knew was uh, there behind the scenes starting to come out but i wanted to ask about punjab from the perspective of uh, a ceo of a club who has ambitions to climb up are you looking at that team closely to see how they are uh, sort of making that jump from i league to isl with a limited budget they have two strikers uh, who were you know i league quality last year they made that jump as well so uh, how do you look at their performances so far See, it's an it's an interesting thing you mentioned about when you make these jumps up. I think it's you can go from the second division to the I League and be competitive with a small change in your budget and smart recruitment of your foreigners because that's the difference between second division and I League, right? So you look at Lajong went all the way through what's the third division because they had to play pre qualifiers, then get into the qualifiers, won it, got into the I League, and now with some astute signings. Their foreign players, they haven't really significantly changed the Indian squad, and a lot of homegrown talent. They're in the top four in the I League. I mean, obviously they had a bad result against Isol a few days ago, but until then they were flying. Um, but I think that next jump, it's almost it's a jump in investment jump as well as investment in quality of foreigners, because what you're paying, what probably Lajong are playing for those four foreigners that they have. Could probably get taken out the budget of one um in the in the isl if you want an established player if not you've got to be smart with your signings i mean if you can go out and get some recruits very well from abroad and get players who potentially you could sell in the indian market that's something you got to look at and i think that's probably something that's not really um looked into yet because it's a gamble but i think you can take that gamble when there's no relegation Like for example, Spanish markets tapped out Orcanosis and it's overpriced, right? The days where you could go to Segunda or Segunda Bay and get players and they'll come here, you're paying 4x for what they get in 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 Spain, so it doesn't make any sense. 
Um, could you go into a Uruguayan market or, you know, obviously a lot of big European clubs are there, but there's enough in CONCACAF region, even Central America, where you can go where you could probably get players, maybe get them on a two-year contract and have a good season, look to sell them. And that could be your business model because otherwise it's just you're bleeding money down and getting good foreigners every year for what marginal gains in the ISL. So unless you've got big investment back in you, you're not going to be able to compete. When you jump up from the I-League, if you want to compete with a Mumbai or Mon Bagan, you've got to be able to compete with the purse strings. So if you don't want to do that, then it's um, you've got to find some other way. I think for Punjab, uh, and you can also correct me if I'm wrong, before we move on to I-League, I'm just going to make an observation. I think the absence of their the best their best foreigner has probably cost them five to ten points. I'm talking about Jordan, Will Margil, and yeah. what a season he had last year, right? You know, in a rock bottom squad, he performed like beyond his potential. So, uh, from what I understand, he had a hamstring tweak and it's not really not really recovered from it. And I feel like that's really undone Punjab's season because, I mean, with all respect to uh, Luca, right? Uh, I mean, and I, I watched him on a day, on a weekly basis here. Yeah. Um, he's he's struggling. Like Luca struggling. A lot of lot of things could be a lot of things could be that you know the, the league league is a step up. Uh, I think Juan Mera's done really well. Like given his yep. his, his skill set, uh, I think that even the centre backs pretty pretty decent to start off with. Uh, but I think if Jordan was probably there. I think we're looking at easily them probably going up the the ladder probably. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, if you've got a decent striker, that's going to get you, yeah. even in games where it's tight, like that game against East Bengal, a little bit of magic. That's yeah. three points and three points when you're that stage of the table is huge. So The Hyderabad yeah. game where they're leading 1-0. Absolutely. So if you could, you know, maybe, you know, somebody like a Bartok Beche, if you'd had them just for the experience and whatever, may have made it, could make a difference in those teams. So I think sometimes... You may not have the budget, but you might be wise to either invest on that experience because it's pretty inexperienced squad. If you look at it, you take away some of those names that we mentioned, you just mentioned, uh, the rest of the squad is pretty inexperienced in terms of top flight football. Yeah. For example, we've been speaking about uh, Brandon for a year, for years, right? But he's never played at, at this level. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Brandon Remnika, right? Or a Samuel Kinshi. For that matter, right? Sweden for Nando is very promising at, in the Goa reserves, but he 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 hasn't played at this level. A Kingsley hasn't played at this level. They took a uh, punt on Amajit and they pulled the plug on that experiment, right? Uh, with my good friend actually taking that that spot, Nikhil Prabhu. He's been one of the bright spots I feel in their their season. So uh, yeah, I mean, right. So now coming to the I League, I'm just going to uh, quickly. Who's who's impressed you the most? Because we thought it was Shiridi before the start of the season, but it hasn't gone. And I feel like Mohammedan will now kind of believe that right? because before season, I spoke to a few people inside the club, and they were like, you know, it's it's shambolic, right? Because they went from second to eighth, yeah, and. And they went really, and they sacked the coach and all of that because you know he wasn't really playing attractive football. But turns out he was the right fit for them all along. So, do Mohammedan now have? And Shrinidhi also suffered a bad result, and so did Gokulam today. So, yeah. are Mohammedan looking like they might just pip Shrinidhi? I, I mean, at the start of the season, I. I put my stuck my neck out and said Srinidhi, and um, I'm going to stick with that because I think Mohammedan will do Mohammedan things, and you know, come ja come ja come January, you know, we've been around again long enough that certain things just happen and they keep happening in England football, and so that's unfortunately what I what I see happening over there. But I think they got pretty good squad, and I think you know they've got um, that young boy who's scoring. Goals for fun in the David, yeah. And so when you've got Indian players doing well, I think Benison's back from injury now. He's recovered, mm -hmm. so if he can get going, that's yeah. another. So I think 
it's they're not reliant just on one or two individual foreigners to do well so i think they're going to be there or thereabouts mm. i think what i love about the i league is you know you suddenly see lajong beating a couple of teams you think okay lajong's doing well and then eyes all go to their home and take you think okay they've got this um and they they get taken apart but mm. it's nice to see a lot of the coaches are, are doing well over there like it's nice to see Ishfaq going to Real Kashmir doing so and it's the difference in the I league is mm. the home advantage is huge mm. right so even when we were like in BFC days going to Shillong and getting mm. six points for Rangdajid and uh, Lajong was a tough ask and if, you did that, if you did that then you think okay we're going to win the league this year because yeah. not many teams are going to go there and get six points mm. and it's the same now it's like if you've got to play one week it's the schedule. I mean, I looked at Trinity's schedule, and sometimes you've got to go to um, Kashmir and play a game, and then the next week you're down in uh, Okulam, right? In, in, in uh, Calicut, it's, it's tough on the players, and that's where it makes it makes it the, the draw can actually dictate that and how the way the games come, um, the schedule of it. So I think it's anyone's until the last. I can't see anyone running away with it. Uh, I can see anyone. Hmm. You can't look at your fixtures and say, oh, it's okay, we've got, yeah. uh, apart from the Nirokas and Trows, which it's obviously going to be tough for them because they're not playing at home. Hmm. Uh, and some of those teams are almost hmm. tweaked to lose, let's say. Uh, I mean, I think <laughs> both of you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yes, we, yes, I do. Yes, yes. unfortunately. So, <laughs> yes. So that's <laughs> the other games, anything, you, you can't really predict what's going to happen. So. Yeah. I have a question here, um, not to do with the league per se, which I think Orko is going to ask furthermore. Uh, is that we always romanticize I League a lot, like at least I do, and a lot of people who played or coached or worked in clubs that worked in I League do. Just because, like you mentioned, the craziness of the travel, the extreme weather, and all. As a coach, now from Bangalore, I guess it's a lot more easier, right? You fly to most places, uh, Bangalore is right in the city, and all that. But if you are a team in Aizol, every time, or let's say Shillong, every time you come back home even, you have to get off at Guwahati, it's a long drive. So how do you tackle those things? Are there any stories that you can say, funny stuff and things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'll clarify one thing. You just said Bangalore is easy. Bangalore is not easy. It's not easy. I'm just, yeah. I think Easier. now, yeah. I think now, the days when I was at Shillong, we, I remember if we had to play Goa, any, any other Goan teams, we had four Four trips oh, to go, yeah. right? Sporting, Dempo, Silgaoka, Churchill. We played at home. We were unbeaten at home. Hadn't conceded. We were playing in Manipur at the time because our home ground wasn't ready. Then we get back to Shillong. We've got to play Sporting. You leave at 4 a.m. to catch a 10 a.m. flight or 9 a.m. flight because you've got to be there at the airport an hour earlier. Down the hill in Sumo, Jeeps, which everyone squashed into and and you, it's a hundred kilometer, less than a hundred kilometer journey, but you have to leave early because of the, the the roads. So players haven't slept. I'm sorry, you're leaving at two. You haven't slept. Eight o'clock flight. You get there by six. Grab something, eat at the airport, get on this flight. Flight goes Guwahati to Kolkata. Sit on the plane for an hour. You don't really, so you don't stretch your legs. Nothing. Next set of passengers come on. You go Kolkata to Mumbai. You get off the, uh, I think Mumbai, we changed planes or it was Jedi, it was the same plane or we changed. And then an hour later, you fly to Goa, another hour. Then you get off, get to your hotel near Fathora. By the time we said, okay, let's eat lunch, then let's take a walk on the ground. Walked over to the stadium, that was it. It's so hot, that contrast of weather. I think let's not train, kill the players. We've just done an 18 hour door to door trip. And then the next day, you play. And doing well in the first half, second half you die and I was recently met up with Eugene and we were laughing about how he, he just collapsed on you know, on the floor in the second half <laughs> Sorry, dressing room at halftime and he just dripping with sweat and just like couldn't think of how he could go out in the second half and players are cramping and the long-term effect by the end of the season we had a significant number of hamstring injuries because of probably players crouched in positions on a plane and in buses and taxis and whatever and it it does take your toll. So those days, which teams won the league? Go and teams won the league all the time. Least amount of travel. They go. played three away at home. Yeah, exactly. So and then the the only trips and you make four trips to Kolkata. So pretty easy because 
know, in applying to act. Right? Yes. So it, it definitely does take your toll um, over a course of over a course of a season. So it's you've got to be clever in terms of how well you plan your um, your travel and how you plan your season. Oh, and sometimes luck of the draw, which teams you get. And this is where back in those days, I League didn't help. And the scheduling department should take into account costs. Yeah. It made more sense for us when we were in Shillong to come down to Goa, play two matches and fly back. Mm. Or a team that comes from Goa, let's say, plays a match in Kolkata, plays a Kolkata team, then takes a trip to Shillong, mm. plays and comes back. It reduces the overall cost for the league. And that's one of the things they were talking about at the start of the I League, saying, let's do a conference system to reduce costs. You don't need to do a conference system. You just need common sense. Um, like US teams do it. They just want to, they just say, oh, US teams do this, let's copy paste it. But if you actually look at it, there's a system called travel partners, which fortunately, like the Young Champs League, Reliance and all are doing it now with youth teams. And look, it's been around for donkey's years. College teams do it in the US and uh, it, it literally is just common sense. Um, it's how you plan if you were traveling yourself. But mm. for some reason, league people don't do this. <laughs> yeah, and uh, speaking of Shillong, I really miss the SSA this year. I mean, it's it's looking fantastic. I mean, uh, what I won't give to... I am exactly. having like, in February. Yeah, to have, been, to have been at that game against Aizol in that small ground, the comp- ground there is no... Stadium. Like, much as you'll get Manipara filling up Kochi Stadium and that yellow army, mm. the... What I like about the I-League drama mm. at games is you have away fans mm. and home and away fans at stadiums is something which you don't really see much in the ISL. Um, you don't get that vibe. And I think when you go down to some of the smaller places, you, you definitely get that. And that's a nice, that's a great feel over there as well. And just, you know, that's what made me fall in love with Shillong as a, as a place yeah. first. Packed out stadiums for matches, absolutely packed. Like people trying to get in and you can't get a ticket. And yeah. you know, this atmosphere as you're walking up to the game, oh. two hours before the game, people are there, people have arrived. So there's what you get abroad, you get pre match build up. Yeah. Um, and you don't get you, you've got manufactured build up in ISL, yeah. they're completely organic. And that's yeah. something you, you're not going to get. And we talk, you go back to what we talked about earlier Champions League with Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, those countries have it, Japan yeah. has it. Japan has it. That's something where we only have it in these kind of leagues. Yeah. We have small pockets and a friend actually posted a picture on Twitter one and a half hours before the game and it was... She was stuck in traffic, wasn't she? Yeah. Traffic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. So, and I expect that because the Polo Junction is very cramped, like there are cars yeah. coming from all, all sides, so I expect it there. And uh, so my final questions on something I actually noticed in that game, Shillong versus Aizol. Uh, and this is obviously we're going to wrap up with the I League three quickly. Uh, but before that, what I noticed in Shillong versus Aizol, and what I also noticed in the IWL match between Hops and Kickstart, we have a we've discussed this that we have a foreigner fetish, and we've discussed this before, right? Even when the foreigners doing badly, because you look at you look at a Kareem Sam, uh, and he was clearly struggling vis-a-vis a David and a Tharpuya on the other side, right? And it looks like it is like David. And uh, it's Rinzuwala who are going head to head for the title, right? Of of who can score more? And uh, do Indian coaches or do coaches in general think five times before hooking off a foreigner? Because I was in the Hops game also, the foreigners went really effective. Kickstart with one Nepalese foreigner dominated them, right? Over Hops who had two Ghanaian foreigners who who went really effective at all. Do Indian coaches? think five times before removing a foreigner do we have that fear put into us saying oh you know listen we've paid a lot for this foreigner you have to utilize is is that something that plays on the minds of coaches it depends i think how strong the coach is and who's recruited the player it comes back to what we were talking about earlier who's recruited the player if your management's brought that player in against your let's say requirements or needs or say or you wanted somebody else and you keep hooking that player you, you in a way you're coming your nose at your management of yep. going again so you're risking something now it pays off if your indian scores right i've done it um i i got rid of a foreign player before uh, or two foreign players before the second division and Did you get uh, flagged for it two boys scored i mean amalima scored for me we qualified we won the second division and we qualified for the i league so you don't get flat when it works yeah. but 
you know, the next year when you're in the I League and you sign a player, um, like I signed Chizoba, and then it wasn't just working for me. And I had to yank him and started to trust more Indian players. And at that point, they didn't score. So then, you know, you have to go into the market and, you know, when I got an Asian striker. So it's, it's tricky because typically, you know, your team creates the chances. There are certain players who will take more chances to finish, certain who won't. Um, less. Typically, over the years, you would say, you know, um, uh, uh, Sean Rooney would be more clinical than, let's say, a Robin Singh. Hmm. But there's hmm. games when you have to make that call. Hmm. Um, and I think that's that's the, the tricky job that, that coaches have. And which is why, you know, you'll see guys like Semboy Howe could probably not get the minutes that he's got, considering his goals to minute ratio is probably quite high compared to a lot of others. Hmm. But I think it, it, it's a tough one. If you've been at the club for many years and you, know, you, can, you can trust the players, mm. I was watching Joby Justin this morning, this afternoon, um, mm. and he, he looked lethal for yeah. Diamond Harbour. Yeah. Um, so you know, maybe maybe he wasn't given enough chance at some of the clubs. And um, yeah. I think you sometimes have to have a little bit of faith in them. Every time I've seen a uh, Shreyas VG, I've just seen the guy scoring every time. And I always thought this guy is a smart striker. But guy has a goal in the AFC Cup, but can't get an IV contract. So, I mean, yeah. some things probably I will underestimate, overestimate the player. Or, That's I why know. I think the next few years will be good because they've cut out this. The last year they did it with no foreigners in the second division, no foreigners in the local leagues. Hmm. So I think over the next, it'll take time. The next five years, we might see, start seeing strikers who played that position for four or five years at hmm. a club. Because otherwise, what happens is like you get an Irfan Yadav, played well at FCBU, yeah. then he decides, all right, I'm getting a big money move to Chennai. Don't go. Don't you're go. going to a league where you're not protected in a way, right? So you're not going to get game. Money. And now, all the hard work of the last year is gone. You're not confidence is gone as a striker, which you need. Had he stayed in that league, he could have been banging the goals in for fun. Yeah, and he could have banged in the league goals in I League. I League, probably, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So and. I honestly, David versus Rinzo, all of this battle is, is is really exciting. If I look at and and the the goal that Rinzo Allah scored yesterday, it was a great finish, great finish, right? So uh, and so just just wrapping up and maybe Sandeep has a few questions, but uh, firstly, congrats obviously on on winning your your group, right? Uh, I think that that's step one. And my next questions uh, about I League three. Uh, because we've, we've got glimpses of it. Uh, there's one team and one coach in particular I want to speak about. Uh, SC Bengaluru, this coach really hasn't caught the radar of a lot of people. But he's doing something because I, I spoke to somebody, an insider. They said, you know, SC Bengaluru was assembled at probably one-fourth the cost that FCBU were. Yeah. And and a lot of people in the ecosystem seem to rate Chinta very highly. Chinta's doing very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's also, uh, they're also leading their group also in the I League 3. Qualified. Qualified. So it, it isn't a flash in the pan for Chinta also. Right? Uh, what if what have you heard? Because like I said, we kind of struggle to name Indian coaches doing well. When you recommend somebody to a club or somebody is asking who are the Indian coaches, right? Uh, they're very few, right? Very few because they don't really, they have the second season syndrome, same as the players also. No, it's, it, but it's exactly what we just said about the, the, the player. Like, you recommend an Indian coach to, let's say, like, suppose an ISL club came to me and said, can you recommend a good uh, Indian coach? My question to them is, what do you want him for? Do you want him for when you sack your coach well, that he's ready to step in? Hmm. Do you want him for his recruitment? Hmm. Do you want him as a number two who the head coach is not going to feel threatened by because he's not capable of doing his job? So. Yeah, that, that's why because there are there's all types, hmm. right? And some of the ISL teams probably need some ISL teams need this, some ISL teams need that. Hmm. Um, some probably don't want the recruitment because they've got somebody else to do that for them, hmm. and they don't trust in the coach to do it. Hmm. Some probably think, hang on a second, we're not 100 percent sure about this coach. If he goes, can this person step in? Hmm. And there, you know, the likes of let's say Ishva, Grenadies. You'd be confident about saying, yeah, they can step in and do this. Mm -hmm. If you want somebody who's got youth development experience and say, okay, this guy's going to bring through youth. Mm -hmm. There are certain coaches who good number twos, but 
can they develop youth and bring them through? No, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's you got to pick, and I think Chinta's done a great job to win um, mm -hmm. the league mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. um, BDFA is impressive with a team that's relatively new, and they you know they did it quite astutely with loan signing from them. Um, and Osama just pointed out saying Bibiano's boys outplayed SC Bangalore this year. You know, it's you talk about one game. Um, mm -hmm. SC Bangalore will be kickstart nine uh, in nine, nine mil. Nine nine mil. Yeah. yeah, we played kickstart in a, in a pretty even game, and kickstart could probably count themselves unlucky to, to be in the tough group that they were in with Rang Dejid and, and mm -hmm. Dempo. If they were in another group, they might have gone through. So mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, and it's you look at a lot of those boys, I think, like the BDFA team that won the league this year, the BFC team, largely the under 17 man or under 19, you'd say. National team. Or under 20 national team team players. So if an under 20 national team can't win the local league, yeah, it's not it's not much of a flex, I would say. So yeah. it's impressive that they did it without losing a game. Well, it's. Uh, their left yeah. back is the one. For, for me, yeah, yeah. But for me, Chinta has to be the the what do you say the breakout coach of 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 the season. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think a lot of them, like I said, last two years. I mean, I think yeah, he's done well. It's great to see like Ishfaq yeah. move away from Kerala Blasters, do well with the yeah. take a plunge. Yeah, with the under eighteen, under sixteen, whatever you want to call it, team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in the SAF, look, that's every team's doing that, right? Right. So in in SAF. So yeah, they should just rename the under 16 to under 18. But then what he's doing at um, Real Kashmir, you know, they, they're doing really, really good job. But again, limited resources. And that's yeah. where you sort of, you, you you value the coach when you see, look at the resources they have available to them. Um, because to beat Diamond Harbor, and Diamond Harbor have unlimited resources. To get out of that group, you look at that group, you think Diamond Harbor is qualifying there. And that team was built to try and qualify for the I-League. From unlimited resources, yeah. endless bit of money. I, we tried to target some of those players um, at uh, mm. so after the Kolkata League finished, and the sums that these guys were on. So this is what we're talking about the last window. Yeah. They're like, I'm on this much a month. I'm thinking you're earning two x of what players at I League clubs like Niroka and Aizol, etc. Mm -hmm. And you're playing. This is for Kolkata League. You're getting these kind of numbers. So they they, they were a stacked team. So all credit yeah, to SC Bangalore there. They're going to be, the, they're going to be the ones that are favourites probably at the moment in that group, in terms of form teams. Um, obviously, I think the two going teams have home advantage, so that's mm. a plus. But Kerala's no pushover, and the Manipur teams, mm. you know what you're going to get from them. So, right. so uh, but are Diamond Harbour your biggest competitors as of as of? No, they didn't qualify. So we have. Qualify. Qualify. No, so no, I mean, SC Bengaluru. Are SC Bengaluru your biggest? I think, yeah. I think the, the good thing about this next round for us is it's five teams, three qualify. Mm. So as long as you don't lose, you pick up two wins, you draw three. Sorry, pick up two wins, draw two. You're pretty safe. Okay. I think, um, yeah, or even one, one draw. Seven points should see you through as a top three. So, and that's where then then it gets into the second division. So, yeah. no, no, so I, that's I, what I, I want to ask you one question here because now. Before Arco goes searching for it, I'll tell you who all qualified: Sporting Goa, Tempo, <laughs> Class A from Manipur, Sporting Goa, and Kerala United. So uh, five teams, good teams. I, I actually did see Sporting play in, in the stadium. They looked quite good. Uh, some good players. So uh, it'll be a very interesting thing, right? But you are going. Who, whoever wins the three, they're going to the I League two with this yes. kind of match practice. Yep. Which is something that we have often struggled with. So, how positive is that a positive change in your opinion? Just on from what I like about what um, Tete and all have brought in with the concept of third division. Look, no one's going to say it's perfect at the moment, right? This uh, Eugene was here recently with and their team, and you know it's hard luck on them. They lost, they didn't lose a game. Um, they drew against Kickstart two two, hmm. and then that's where it cost them. Had they won that game then a draw against us they would have gone through on goal difference mm -hmm. right uh, so then to not lose a game and go out diamond harbour have gone out without losing a game mm -hmm. um, and having you know got 10 points we won our group at 10 points mm -hmm. they've gone out with 10 points mm -hmm. so it, it's a it's not a nice format um you, you've mm -hmm. invested all that money and then four, four games later it's over mm -hmm. right i think it's not fair um whoever now falls out of this group of five 
two teams won't make it, three will. Those two teams are also going to feel hard done by in terms of, okay, our season's over after eight games. Yes. And you sign players and then their contracts pretty much will be null and void after January. Yes. So they'll have to look for clubs. So from a player's ecosystem point of view, from a coach's ecosystem point of view, it's not perfect. But what they're going towards is, yes. so we'll have eight teams in the second division this year. Yes. Hopefully two will qualify for the I League, two will drop down. And you get 10. Next year, if you keep adding this system, you're making the second division bigger to get to a point where it's 12 teams. Hmm. You have a 12 team second division, 12 team I League, and whatever, 12 team ISL, let's say. That's a better system. So you avoid all these games where you get six nils, 10 nils. Like Sporting Club de Goa's group was crazy. And hmm. last game, Ara, hmm. Ara had lost uh, to that new team from Madhya Pradesh, 7 nil. Huh. Yeah, that Madhya Pradesh team would have gone through because Sporting had racked up 10 against one team. Yeah, that's not a league where you where it's 10 nils and 7 nils is not. That's not football. You shouldn't have that in at this at professional level. Yeah. Right. So I think we'll probably weed all that out in a few years' time yeah. if you can if you stick with the system. What I hope is they stick with the system because I've been here for 10 years, coached in this league a couple of times, and every single time the format is different. So Consistency is what you just hope for. So when you're looking at the, so, so yes, we are wrapping it up. Uh, when you're looking at the five now, how you mentioned the five, the huge goal difference, etc. How competitive is this? Because I've seen your team, I've seen Sporting, I've seen uh, the two Sportings. I have not yep. seen much of the other two, so I don't know about them. So uh, how do you look at this, this last uh, round for qualifying? I think. There's no, there's no favorites. Um, we, I think where, where it's going to be key is who has the best defensive record, because if you can, like I said, if you avoid defeat in two games, you're picking up points, you're stopping others getting points, you're closer to them, and one, one win will get you through. Uh, I think you can get through. Um, you don't want to lose. That's, that's unfortunately what second divisions become. It's become a game you can't afford to lose. Losing uh, that. No one's qualified. None of the, the guys who won their groups have won it by losing a game, mm. right? So when that happens, is it becomes negative football because then you're trying not to lose rather than trying to win. Um, so luck of the draw, look, I think uh, mm. at the end of it. So yeah, so and I think the 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 one that I'm really looking forward to watching are Klasa. Really want to see what they can do, but. Uh, I'd say, I'd say, like you said, right? It's a, I mean, it's anybody's game, really. Uh, and sporting, we know, I know from my time that they're not going to be any, they're not going to push overs for sure. Right. So, yeah, good luck, good luck for that. And uh, like you said, semblance of a structure, because even previously, the teams which would play the second division had no incentive to, again, come back next season. But now, that has kind of, Put in that structure. That's the bit that, that's what I like about it. So if we qualify now next year, we know for sure. Mm. Obviously, 2024 we'll be playing in the second division, but irrespective of whether we qualify for the I League, we can start planning for the next season saying that the bare minimum we're a second division. Team. Second so division. It's, like, it's like any club abroad, you know, you're in the second division. So already now, like mm. we're starting to plan thinking if we qualify, I know I've got to make one trip to Kolkata to play United, right? I've got to make two trips to Bangalore, SC Bangalore, and FCBU, definitely a trip to Kerala, definitely a trip to Delhi, and two trips to Mumbai. So, because of Kenpe and Amber, so you can actually start logistics budget. Probably January transfer window. You're starting to look at okay, now Diamond Harbor didn't qualify. Can I go and tap tap up Joby Justin, right? So you can start planning when you know what the league is. When you're just when you're weighing, and then one week later the AF says, okay, by the way, this competition's starting, and this is what you're doing. It's tough. So you can plan your away uh, matches. You can plan structure things, budget things players as well so i think it's a lot it's much much better it's a huge improvement yeah. yeah so as we are ending the stream i just saw a couple of questions i thought maybe we can just look into that um viviano's voice outplay that we saw prad think of usage of advanced tools and data analysis in recent years in isl but i think clubs are not interested to go that way Is yeah. that i'll disagree i think not all the i league clubs but i think even some of the smaller clubs i think they do it differently. Like Srinidhi definitely is hmm. doing things the right way. Um, there's a lot of analytics involved over there. They're very astute in the players they go after um, and values that they find even with their with their foreign players. I think 
Isol and Shillong do it differently. It's still the old feel for it, but they have a very good scouting network. Um, Isol's B team that's playing in the Mizoram Premier League has players that could easily walk into some Miley teams and certainly walk into ISL reserve teams. So they're obviously doing something right. They may not have a GPS on the back and they may not have, uh, you know, streams of data coming out with instat reports of how much uh, meterage people are doing and pass accuracy. But when you've got Miso Premier League to watch in front of you, you know, the cream will rise to the top. So the ecosystem, though, they do produce stuff. So that makes up for not having the tech as such. Also, finally, we have a football person as the sports minister of an entire state. And I think it's a huge win for Indian football. I can't tell you how, how big a win this is. Because we, we, we know that he had problems with the previous regime. You know that he had a lot of, you know, because of difference in political parties, obviously. But I think Tete has been like, it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Like I messaged him and, and I think, I think he's also the guy's definitely a decade's work of worth of work has paid off. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, there's not an overnight thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a question about my clock not working. It is working. Uh, and the stream is not recorded. This is live. Uh, hi, <laughs> Uh, Hyderabad Derby next season. That's what uh, Pratt has said yeah. most likely. I but I don't know if the other Hyderabad team is going to be in Hyderabad. Of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Srinidhi has gone top of the table just now. Um, so back up to where my I mean, obviously, Mamun has got games in hand. Uh, but uh, I think for the for the best of everyone, if Srinidhi do go up, they should just take over Hyderabad. FC. But they, uh, apparently, it's a difficult situation. There's a lot of debt, right? Why do you want to take yeah. that to your club? It's just a no, no. I mean, just take their place, like physically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So don't actually buy out the club. Just shut that club down. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's en enough's enough. I mean, I, like, and I'm speaking, like, it's just a new avatar. We've all seen this at Pune. Like, mm. and sadly, a lot, some of those people are suffering it twice. <laughs> They've been on the receiving end of non-payments for six months at Pune, and now to have to go through all that again. I mean, these are people. Who, Lot of families and right. you feel for the young players you feel especially the youth players youth players have just been sent home and saying we'll let you know so they're not letting them join another club they're not being paid and you're just harming their careers you've got youth coaches who are in similar positions a lot of people i think or can't mean no personally who've had to just put in their papers and say listen enough's enough now looking for a job in the middle of the season when it's tough to find a job so for the good of everybody just you know that club just needs to disappear and the people involved shouldn't be allowed in football you should be banned from football you shouldn't be allowed but these fifa bans yeah great okay fifa ban can't sign anyone maybe they'll the others get paid happens again and there's i think they're up to their third ban now but the people responsible need to be banned from football and shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a football club and people are doing a good job in the same city like for example srinidhi and are investing in their own infrastructure and facilities those are the kind of clubs that you need in indian football because they're there for the long run and um, you know, whatever. I mean, there are obviously issues. It's not complete. There are, there are obviously bigger issues being HFC and which is happening. But end of the day, uh, it's not right on the player. It's not right on any of the people involved at those clubs, and especially the ones who don't have a voice. Players can go to FIFA, transfer ban happens. That happens. Yeah. You can leave, go and sign at a new club, and then months later they will get their money when CAS intervenes and everything. But if you're a groundsman of that club, if you're one of the vendors of that club, if you're one of the kit men of the club or you're a masseuse, you're not going to AFF uh, Tribunal, you're not going to CAS. So, and you're never going to get that money. And that's what's just not right. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And uh, from what I understand, the sale is also not uh, sale or takeover or investment. It's not coming through because there are certain overpriced uh, expectations and stuff like that. So that's also I saw the deck. It's, it's nuts. I saw the deck. Yeah. It's it's, it's crazy. Yeah. The amount it's of crazy. money they're asking for is whatever. But that's yeah. all. But that's most ISL clubs. You can't, I mean, the, the, the valuation yeah. can't be based on what I've lost. Yeah. It's like trying to sell a car and saying, giving all the old petrol receipts and saying, this is what I spent on this car now. Pay me this much for my car now. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work that way. So. <laughs> yeah. But there's one question I think you, I might. Do you have plans to put stands on the Dempo Academy ground? There are stands. There are? The cameras in the stand side. So when yeah. the camera shows the ground, you don't see the stand. So <laughs> this is Ella. I'm assuming they're speaking about Ella. They, that does have stands, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm coming there in March. So Pratt, I'll 
yes. make sure I get you up. So before this is the last, I had a lot of questions coming and I guess we should let Prat go. We had said 45 yeah. minutes, we really took a lot of his time. Yeah. And uh, I had asked a couple of one, if you have one, do you have any travel, away day travel stories with any team that you went that are funny or incidents that you remember? I mean, I just recounted the I uh, most gruel, grueling one, which is probably the um, mm. uh, La, Jong, La Jong journeys. I mean, every single one of them was harrowing experiences and like to get to Kerala in those days, it was a two day trip. You, you couldn't get from Shillong to Kerala in one day. And actually, you actually had to break your journey in Bangalore or, or a Hyderabad or somewhere. Um, but I think ISL wise, the toughest journey is always going to be Jamshedpur um, mm. because of those trips. Um, but I think that doesn't always have to be negative. I think the best for me was Goa trips with the FC because the first away win we got was in Goa against Salgauka, hard fought win. We went out as usual, celebrate, you go out, and then the players, had, you know, as usual, say, can we push curfew? Can it not be 12? Can it be one o'clock? And they were obviously come, as you, come to me and ask me, can you go and ask Gaffer? Can you get an extra hour? And so we, did, we just use it. So we didn't let them, but we use it as a carrot every, time, every single time. So it was like, next away match, right? You win today, this, this is what you get. Um, night out, or we never lost a game in Goa for three years. Won the Fed Cup there as well. And we never, I, I don't, if I recall correct, we didn't lose a single game in three years. I was at BFC in Goa. So, so it's because of the promise of uh, one hour curfew? Well, it wasn't. Obviously, it wasn't just a one hour curfew. But the promise of a night out in Goa was uh, was enough to make sure that we made sure we picked up. We didn't lose a game then. So, <laughs> so uh, on that note, I think it's a good note to end on. Thank you so much, Brad, for your time. Uh, thanks, Orko, for uh, making it. I know you are having car, car troubles and things like that. So uh, we'll do more episodes. I think uh, Orko probably will come up with an IWL episode as well. Uh, I was very occupied up until now, and now I have some more time, so I'll also be able to be. Uh, Good luck for the rest of your season, uh, Coach. Hope to see you. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. But hopefully, the next next month when we're speaking, we'll be in the second division and uh, hmm. on our way back into yeah. the early. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We need a team like Tempo because yeah. I was checking yeah. about old Tempo, and I was like, this is such a great team. So, hmm. absolutely. So, uh, yeah. all the best to you, Coach, uh, and thank you so much for making it. And thanks, uh, guys. Yes. Subscribe, do all the good things, right, guys? Uh, Orko is doing some SEO stuff also, I think. <laughs> that will help. <laughs> okay. See you. Okay.